Hello and welcome to a very special How I Paint Things. Now what I've got whizzing around in front of me is one of the new US Rangers from Warlord Games. Much like the other elite troops that you see from those kits, uh, they are very similar to the US Infantry, and that's perfectly accurate because Rangers were equipped in a very very similar manner to the US Infantry themselves. Main difference being in the amount of extra kit that they carried into battle, and this fella is a really good example. The wire cutters, the flashlight, there's even things like uh, hatchets and pickmatics, which sounds really crazy when I say it aloud, <laughs> but there's a bunch of gump to make these guys look the business. Interestingly enough, there's also plenty in there that you could very easily use them to convert into engineers, which is kind of what I've aimed for here. Uh, the Bangalore torpedoes that are included are very D-Day, but nonetheless would look cool if you were going to paint them up. Now, there's some very cool pictures of the sprues up on the Warlord Games website if you want to have a look at those, and I will link to those in the description. As well, all of the paints will be listed down there, so if you want to follow along, let's get started. So, one of the most famous looks for the Rangers, probably the way that Hollywood has kind of canonized them, features them in the OD-33 woolen serge trousers. The brown trousers. Unfortunately, these guys with the pockets on the side are not technically accurate. If you want these guys to be D-Day accurate, well, you can paint them brown, and it would be a real fuss pot who turns around and says to you, well, that's not correct, because, yeah, but it will look fine. However, it doesn't take much work to actually trim the pockets off, and luckily, they're in a position on the leg where the material is going to pull taut anyway. Um, as well, there's plenty of bits in the Ranger kit that you can use to cover any little imperfections. So, grab yourself a nice sharp knife, and I tend to find it easiest coming up close to the bottom of the jacket and just wiggle your knife back and forth a couple of times to make a guide where when we flip them around now don't try and slice the whole pocket off in one go just little bits at a time but that guide that we've cut in it's kind of like whittling ordinarily when our knife reaches that point it's going to stop you hear that little click as it hits that point, that means we're not going to dig up into the jacket. So, this will take maybe two or three minutes per guy. Um, it's not the, the fastest thing going, but if you do, you know, really want to make sure that this is spot on for D-Day, then it's a little bit of extra work, but not at all difficult to do. Now, once you've kind of chunked away the pocket, what you can do, the same as if you were cleaning off mold lines, just scrape away until you've got a smooth finish to that leg. Now it's not going to be perfect, but once it's painted, and especially once you've got a little bit of equipment up around his legs here, you're not going to see that difference. And uh, from table distance, it's going to look way cool. And there we go, easy as that. That's taken me about four minutes worth of work. Uh, it is a little bit trickier when you come up onto the um, wound pouch that he's got hanging here, uh, but don't worry too much. Like I said, you can cover that up with any bits that you need to. Now, if you are a little worried that maybe your scraping and scratching isn't going to look right, then Primer will hide a lot of sins. If you can't bury it in equipment, you know, the sides of his legs there, don't worry. Primer's amazing. Now, I've used here Bone White from Vallejo. Uh, skeleton Bone from Army Painter or even Wraith Bone will work quite well as well. Anything with a little bit of bony, sort of beige warmth to it, I would suggest, is going to work the best here. A light grey will also work, but this, this is just what I like to paint from. So we're going to start, like we normally do with miniatures like this, with the skin. Now I'm using here Tanned Flesh from the Army Painter. Now this one has been discontinued, because this isn't the... Uh, the new Fanatic version. I'm pretty certain that's either Moonstone or Agate Skin, which is its direct replacement, but uh, don't worry too much about specifics. However you like to paint skin, pop down the base coats for it now. Now it's really a matter of preference here, whether you start with his jacket or his trousers. Now I'm going to start with his jacket and gaiters, painting them both the same, and for this I have German Camo Beige. Now this will cover very nicely over our primer, if you do want a darker tone, like deeper recesses and all that, what you can do here would be instead to start with khaki. Uh, but this, 
I would suggest once it's shaded, it's going to look the business anyway. Particularly over large flat areas, or mostly flat, like his elbows and what have you, you may need to come back and give this a second coat. And you'll see I'm not too fussed, as I'm going on here, if I do hit sections of his webbing and what have you. Um, try and avoid them if you can, but don't worry if you can't. Now that is going to take two coats, like I said, particularly on the arms, but that's not too difficult to reach at all. What I'm going to do now is paint in his trousers, and for this I'm going to use US Field Drab. Seems like it would be a waste to go to all the trouble of trimming off those pockets, and then paint them green. So, <laughs> away we go. Um, I'm also going to pop a little bit of this with a smaller brush on that tiny wee snippet of shirt that's visible up near his uh, collar there because it would be a fairly similar color. Quite a bit darker, honestly, but uh, for our purposes, quick blast of this will do the job. Now when it comes to his pack and his webbing, um, there's actually what, what I think is quite a useful section in the Wargamer's Guide that I have done and linked in the description. Uh, pretty much when and why certain colors would appear on the webbing. For now, we're just going to pop some dark sand on it. This would be accurate. And you'll see here that I've actually cut down the handle on the entrenching tool fixed into the pack. Um, I saw quite a few photos of guys, some on their way to Sicily for Operation Husky, but quite a few rangers uh, heading up the beach on D-Day for uh, Operation Overlord trimmed down that little bit of handle because these guys are carrying so much extra equipment. Every few grams you can save that you don't really need is a blessing. Now, a quick note here on his bayonet sheath, the little hanging bit of a canvas that would be attached to his webbing, that's going to be yellow. That's correct. The rest of it here, we're going to paint later. Don't worry. We are now going to paint in his satchel charge, though, and here I'm going to use khaki. Uh, you can go to something like canvas uh, from the Panzer Aces range, but to my eye, it's a little bit dark. Uh, all the same, this will work just fine. And then we're on to the last of the soft details, which is going to be his boots. Now here I'm going to use leather brown because it's pretty much perfect for this. All right, let's now flip him around because I'm going to paint in the wooden details on him. Now I'm going to start with the handle of his entrenching tool. And if he had the ax hanging from his hip too, I would paint this at the same time. I'm going to use here beige brown. Now this is the color I also use for my British rifles. And I'd recommend if you do want to stick to just one color for all of this, uh, all of the wood, then you could use this. But American rifles, you know, the, the wooden furniture on them, to my eye looked a little bit darker. And then for his weapon, I'm going to swap to flat brown. This is a little bit darker and a fair bit warmer uh, than... Beige brown is by comparison. Just paint over the entire weapon first. Don't worry about the black bits. And once that has dried, we'll spin them around and we can start applying some German gray to anywhere that's going to be black. And I mentioned this quite a bit. German gray is super useful for just off black, which means when we shade it, it's going to have a little bit of depth to it. Any bit that's going to be black is painted in now. Uh, as well, little tiny bits on the tools, like the head of the uh, those wire cutters there. Obviously, I'm going to do that bit off screen. So as well as his weapon and all of those little bits of oddments, I've also painted the outside of the goggles in that German grey, because they were a plasticky sort of finish, and they were essentially black. Now, the goggles, I want to talk about these briefly, because they're actually quite interesting. They were manufactured by the Polaroid Corporation, and they had a clear, you know, they had a clear sort of dust goggle finish to them first, but there were three inserts that you could slot in behind the goggles. Uh, there were two which were varying shades of sort of a yellowish color, um, similar to blue blockers, if you remember those. And there was also a red tinted version, which was intended for nighttime operations. So strictly speaking, none of them would ever be blue. Uh, but when it comes to painting goggles, I think most of us think of blue as reflecting the sky or something similar. So you could simply paint 
the uh, the goggles in here with the helmet color, you know, for the clear finish. But I am using Prussian dark blue or dark Prussian blue, whichever it is. And I'm going to carefully fill these in. Uh, it's easiest if you move them around so that you can always put the tip of the brush where you want the paint to be, uh, rather than trying to draw towards the corners. Uh, I just find this a little simpler. Now everything I'm going to do to his goggles, I'm also going to do to the little lens on his flashlight. Now the final base coat that we're going to apply is some US Olive Drab. Now this was, once upon a time, called Brown Violet. Uh, but they changed the color name, but it is still that wonderful army man green. So I'm using this now as part tidy up, part base coat, making sure I don't splurge over the edge of the goggles. But otherwise, it's relatively simple to apply. So this and the flashlight. If you had any grenades or any other painted metallic equipment, this is the color to go for. And once all of those base coats are finished and you've done any tidy up that you want to, it's time to shade them. And what I'm going to use today, this is a half and half mix of Agrax Earthshade and Lamian Medium. Uh, you can use neat Agrax Earthshade, but it's going to be really dark. Uh, I also prefer using Lamian Medium than Contrast Medium because I don't want it to stick and cling like Contrast Medium does in the recesses in quite the same way. Lamian Medium is going to give me more of what I want. So let's apply this over the entire miniature. Take your time and make sure that you are getting it you know, behind everything into all of the recesses. And yeah, the medium's going to help it flow. On top of which, it's not going to dull everything down quite so much, which is really useful for when we don't want to you know, have to spend forever going back and highlighting our base coats. So over everything, we'll give it about half an hour to dry. Let's get a look at what he looks like. Once that step's done. Now after about half an hour, 40 minutes, you'll have something that looks like this. Now it is a little difficult sometimes to tell when a shade is dry because quite a few of them that are on the market, whether it be Strong Tone or, you know, Agrax Earthshade as we've used, they do dry just a little bit shiny, but it's much of a much because we are going to varnish this dude anyway. Now next steps, uh, I am going to go ahead and highlight his skin. Uh, this is something I quite enjoy doing. I know not everybody does like painting faces, but if you do, or if you don't, you're willing to hold your nose and get it done. I've got Cadian Flesh Tone here. What I'm going to do, see just a tiny amount on the end of my brush. Just paint over most of the surface of his face and uh, fingers. And leave just a little bit of that uh, tanned flesh in the recesses. And then we're going to go up to Kislev Flesh. Now with this, we're going to concentrate on the high points of his face. So bits like his nose, his chin, the tops of his cheekbone, just a quick line across here will do the job. And uh, if his helmet is tipped back enough, I will do this off screen. I'll get in under there and uh, paint. Oh, I can reach that. His brows too. Another good spot for this is to just dot down the back of his knuckles. Now, once you're satisfied with that, if you want, you can stop here, apply your decals and go ahead and give them a varnish, but I am going to highlight them. Now, how I'm going to do this is for his jacket, his trousers, his detonation charge, and his uh, webbing. I've gone back to the original color. So in this case, this is a German camo beige. And you want to add in about half and half base color with ivory. Now, if ever you're worried about adding too much ivory, then just err on the side of a little bit more of the base color. It will look pretty bright going on, uh, but this does dull down quite a lot as it dries. With this particular style, the first highlights that you apply are still going to look really bright and out of place. But keep the faith. I've mixed up now my trouser highlight color. And I've aired a little bit more. I have added a tiny touch more of the uh, US Field Drab. So the thing that I really like about this particular method is that if you overdo it with any of your highlights, what you can do is just go back to the base color and essentially erase them. 
Uh, works really well, very quick to do. What we'll move on to now is those goggles, because they are the last thing that I really want to highlight. And I have here Azure, which is a super light blue by comparison to what we've used. So let's try and get them on camera for this. I've got here quite a fine brush, and I've run a fair bit of water into my Azure so that it flows nice and easily. And the same is true there for the goggles as it is for the other highlights. If you make a mess, I went back to that uh, dark Prussian blue and sorted things out. Now what I've got is a tiny bit of fresh ivory. You can use white for this if you want, uh, but I've just got ivory ready. What I'm going to do is angle my dude so that I'll just pop a tiny little blip of this up in the corners. Oh gosh, that's not... Oh, that'll do. Now off camera, I did hit him with a second little dot in the opposite corner. Uh, that's not going to look like much yet, but once we've varnished that, it's going to look quite cool. Trust me on this. What we are going to do now is varnish the rest of the miniature though. And for this, I'm using a nice matte. This is Instars Varnish Plus. And if you've got any decals that you're going to apply, apply them before this stage. Um, I don't, so I'm not going to. Over the entire miniature, seal your model. And as this dries, you're going to see what a huge difference it makes to those highlights that we've done. Um, a lot of folks will insist, you know, I'm using plastic. I don't need to highlight my miniatures. Well, it's not always about protection. Sometimes it's about the surface that you're going to get. And you'll see what I mean once this is dried. Now, doesn't it just make a world of difference? Like, yeah, <laughs> it's worth varnishing your miniatures. I'll say that. What I've got now is Ardcoat, which is the Citadel Gloss Varnish, uh, mostly because it's the one I've got to hand. All I'm going to do is bop a little bit of this into the lenses of the goggles. And I'm also going to pop this on the flashlight cover. Oop. And then the last thing to do is apply as base. So I'm going to do that off screen. The recipe for that will be in the description. So check that out if you're looking for how I'm going to do this. It's so simple. Let's get a look at what it looks like when he is all finished. And so there at last, our ranger is complete. And nice simple base, he's supposed to be storming a beach after all, that doesn't look too bad. Like I mentioned, it is relatively simple to swap this up to a couple of different colors, and particularly if you are mixing ivory for your highlights, all of those base colors are going to work for pretty much everything. It does save you having to buy a whole bunch of extra paints. So again, thank you very much to Warlord for letting me have a box of the new rangers. They're very cool, and like I mentioned, I think mixing them in with the US infantry is going to give you a wealth of extra bits, which are going to be seriously useful. As well, thank you very much to Exit23 Games for the light and sound equipment, as well as all of my wonderful patrons who are keeping me ticking in paints and glue, including my gorgeous producers who are showing up on screen now. Thank you so much for your support, folks. Really mean it, every time. Now, any questions or anything, feel free to drop them in the old comment box below. My Twitter and Instagram are both linked there too. So thank you very much for your time, one and all, and you all enjoy the rest of your day.